Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to be talking about binding RAD Expression Editor to the RAD Grid View, giving you a very, very powerful combination. Putting these two controls together gives your user the ability to create link expressions against the RAD Grid View data. Let's take a look at that by creating a new project which we'll call rad expression binding we're going to accept that as a Silverlight 5 application when the telerik wizard comes up we're going to go ahead and choose data visualization and expressions let's click finish and bring up our application we'll start in mainpage.xaml here the first thing that we want to do was once again create a rad expression editor and give that rad expression editor a name this is just as we did in the previous video this time however we're going to come up and we're going to create a namespace for this application let's call it my and we will point it to this very application by saying clr namespace and when we do that we will get some help from Visual Studio, we'll be able to go down and pick this application to assign to that namespace. And you'll see we're going to use that with our resources in just a moment. In order to have some data, let's create an employee class. To save you the time of having to sit through this, I'll just drop in the employee class. You can see that it has a number of public properties, first name, last name, occupation, starting date, is married, salary, and also a constructor. We'll also create a method called get employees, which will return an observable collection of employee, and we will initialize that collection with four employees. And you can see that we fill in all of the data for those four employees. You could, of course, create many more. Let's come back and create a view model for our project. We'll call it my view model, keep it nice and simple. And once again, I'm going to drop the code in and then we can take a quick look at what's involved in this view model for our project. We have an observable collection of employee called employees. And on the getter for that, it simply checks to see if it's null. And if so, it calls the static get employees method. And in either case, it now returns that observable collection of employees. Couldn't be a much simpler view model. Let's come back to mainpage.xaml. Come down above the grid and create a resources section for our user control. Inside that resources section, we're going to use that my namespace to locate the view model that we just created and give that a key so that we can refer to that as a static resource. So we'll call that my view model. With that in place, we want to make a couple changes to the grid first and most important we want to set the data context we're going to set that to the static resource we just created my view model so the view model will act as a data context for the grid and for all the controls within the grid while we're working on the grid let's give that grid some rows by creating row definitions we'll create three rows the first two will have height of star, that is that they will take up the remaining space after the third row, which will be set to auto, that is it will size to whatever we put into it, and the other two will split the remaining space evenly, since they are both one star. Now let's go ahead and add a rad grid view, but in order to do that, we're going to need to add the necessary namespace, so let's go up to Telerik, RAD controls for Silverlight and choose the configuration project wizard and come down and choose grid view. That will add the necessary references and dependent references. And now we can go ahead and add a RAD grid view to our project. Let's give that a name and let's set the item source for the RAD grid view to bind to 
the employee's collection. We'll also set a couple properties on the RAD grid view. The user cannot freeze the columns and we're going to collapse the row indicator. With the grid view in place, we can come back to the expression editor and there are a couple properties that we can set on the expression editor. The first thing that we're going to do is to say that the expression editor item is going to bind to the first entry in the employee's collection. Let's place the rad expression editor into row one in the grid. And of course the grid view will be by default in row zero. And now let's set an event handler for the expression changed event, which we will set as expression editor expression changed. The bulk of the work that we have to do is in that event handler. Let's pick up the name expression editor expression changed and go to the code behind file and implement that event handler. First thing that we need is a file, a filter descriptor of our employee. We're going to call that generic filter descriptor with the filter descriptor ready we are able to create our event handler the first thing that we want to do is to test whether our expression editor has an expression or the expression is null if it's not null then we are going to check whether the expression editor expression is of the type we expect and so we're going to try to match that to the type of an expression that acts as a function taking an employee and returning a boolean. If both of those conditions are met, then our generic filter descriptor's filtering description is going to be set to the expression of a func of employee bool, and we're going to use that as a cast on our expression editor expression. We're now going to look at our grid view filter descriptors and see if they contain the generic filter descriptor. If not, we're going to add to the grid views filter descriptors the generic filter descriptor that we just created. If the if statement, the initial if statement fails, it can fail because it's null, it can fail because it's the wrong type. So we're now going to test to see if it's null. If it is in fact null, we're going to test to see whether the grid views filter descriptors already contains the generic filter descriptor. And if it does, we're going to remove it. Pretty straightforward in terms of setting up our filter descriptor. Let's go ahead and build this application and run the application. You see the grid view in row one, you see our expression editor in row two, and you notice that the grid view has four records. Those are the four records that we initialized it with. Let's scroll down in the expression editor and find the fields. There are the fields corresponding to the fields in our data. We'll choose salary. We can then choose an operator. So we'll choose less than, and then we can put in a value, say 2,500, and notice that we immediately filter down to those records where the salary is less than 2,500. We can build arbitrarily complex lambda expressions here. So for example, we can add and, and now we're going to add a second criteria. So let's click on occupation and we're going to set that equal to and now we need to pass in one of the occupations and so let's pass in cashier. Let's make that a string for cashier and notice that we immediately come down to just those records where the salary is less than 2500 and the occupation is cashier. Notice that this is very very dynamic if I delete the second part of our equation, we immediately come back to all the occupations that are less than 2,500. And if I delete the salary, we come back to all of our original values. 
I hope you've seen how easy it is to bind the expression editor to the data grid and how powerful it is to do so. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. Thank you very, very much. And I look forward to talking with you again very soon.